Hello. Are you thinking of traveling abroad for the first time to further your studies and thinking of how to secure a decent and affordable accommodation? Then this is for you. On this episode, we highlight issues regarding rent and how to get yourself an affordable home even before you enter the UK. This is Study Abroad Reality Check 5 on YouTube. Of course, it is an Abna Pabna experience. Please don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Accommodation, you agree with me, is not only a basic necessity of life, but it is also a visa requirement as in when you're traveling abroad. Some of you who have traveled abroad would testify that before you get your visa, you'll be asked to provide a proof of address wherever you're going to. Usually it is a hotel, but in our case, as international students, it has to be uh, a, a hostel facility or a private accommodation and this can be very hectic especially when you are an international student and it is your first time and that reminds me of the day we we're going for a visa interview mm -hmm. i had to make sure that i memorize my address very well because of course it was so different from the system that we're used to in ghana I wrote mine in my palms. <laughs> yes, I remember. I remember. And I know there were people who also wrote yes at the back of their palms because they were scared that they could forget. They could forget. They could forget their number. And that should tell you how important or how critical mm. knowing your um, address is when you are going for this visa interview. So mm. that is one tip you have to know in case you have any plans of coming to the UK to further your studies. One of the issues that remains a Herculean task for most people in securing accommodation abroad as a guarantor. Guarantor? Yes. How does a guarantor come in this particular situation? Well, a guarantor or uh, the need for a guarantor is a common practice when you're securing accommodation in the UK. According to UK laws, okay. you have to provide someone who can pay your debt in case you're not able to pay. So in legal terms, a guarantor is someone who pays for your rent when you default. So if I have someone in Ghana, mm -hmm. can a person no. serve as a guarantor? No, and that is where the problem lies. It is not enough to just bring anybody who can pay because they can pay. Okay. The person has their, their, their requirements. Okay. Their requirements, their, their, these are legal requirements. Okay. The person, first of all, has to be a permanent resident of the UK. Okay. So the person okay. has to be holding a, a, a resident a permit. Passport, yeah. To put it that yeah. Way. And then he has to be an adult between 18 and 75. Uh, and then they have to be a British homeowner. Mm. Mm. The, the person must be able to own a home in the UK okay. as well. Okay. And then the person must also prove that they earn more than twice the rent you are going wow, to be paying huge. yeah that so if you are paying five thousand for whatever period you are signing for the person should be earning more twice that. Mm. that money before they can act as a guarantor and so different people who act as guarantor depending on the situation mm. the person who might be a guarantor for me may not be able to guarantee for yeah. you for you to be able to get a guarantor mm. the guarantor is supposed to be someone who has a good credit history i don't know how exactly true that is. it you is true that for me. it is true because you know here in the uk people do a lot of things on credits yeah you use credit cards and so on and so forth so if you don't have a good credit record on managing some of these things you cannot because how can the landlord trust you that you'll be able to pay for that money? And so in most cases, parents act as guarantors for the award. But in the cases of international students, you need somebody. And it is really a big problem. I mean, according to records or statistics, getting a guarantor remains one of the huge challenges for international students so, Abna, in securing accommodation mean, um, a prospective international student mm. who do not have someone who meets all these requirements does it mean that i can't come to the uk to oh, further my studies mm, well ordinarily you can't i mean that would be the end but thankfully there are online sources 
that provide these services. I mean, they, we have, and they are national and legal. Okay. Okay. So you have the housing hand .co.uk, mm. which is the legal website that provides guarantor services for anybody, including okay. international students. You have the guarantor services.com, you have ukguarantor.com, and then you have tentguarantor.com. And so most property owners, uh, whether private or student accommodation, may require these people and they are accepted also to serve as guarantor and for anybody. Do you, do you have to pay for mm. their services? Some of them you would have to pay. Others, others it's a partnership between the landlord mm. and those services. And so the tenant or the prospective tenant would not have to pay anything. Does one need any special requirement to be able to secure their services? No, you just go online and then uh, just visit any of the sites as are displaying on your screens right now and then you can just visit them, follow uh, the procedure, and then you just provide all the necessary document they would be requesting from you, and then you're good to go. All right, so in order not for you to go through all this hassle mm -hmm. of looking for a guarantor, I think it all boils down to having someone who is able to trust you, yeah. you understand? Because I'm looking at all these requirements, not just anyone would be able to do this for you because the risk is that if you are unable to pay your rent the person would have to pay the rent with his or her own account before we came you know we had issues getting yeah. this guarantor mm. and that is not to say that we didn't know anybody in the uk we had friends and family mm -hmm. here but some of them did not meet this requirement and some of them who met it were not ready to do it because some of them were scared. I mean, in Nipa they, you see, they the were scared of those who could sticking not their necks their out. They will not be bold enough to tell you mm -hmm. that they'll, they'll give you stories as to why they can't do it. A friend of mm -hmm. ours actually told us that, oh, she can't guarantee for us because she doesn't know us enough. I mean, she mm -hmm. doesn't know us enough in mm -hmm. terms of credit issues to be able to stick her neck out uh, for us on that score. And then when we came, it got to a point where one of our payments delayed. Do you yeah, remember? Yeah. And then they wrote to us that they are giving us an ultimatum. If we fail to meet that ultimatum, they were going to write to our guarantor. Yes, here, right? <laughs> yeah, so all these things are real. So we never so, pray to come so to it, that. It, it's, it, it's never a sieve that mm. they say all these things just to, I mean, scare you or anything. I mean, they are real. Once they say that if you default in the payment, you are going to write to your guarantor, they will yeah. do it. I mean, but before that, you know, in this country, there are a lot of systems and they don't just get up and do mm. anything before they get in touch with your guarantor they would make sure that they get in touch with you first to find out why you've mm. defaulted in the payment and if possible in some cases they even give you a payment plan yeah they, they, they are ready to listen to you they are ready to listen to your mm -hmm. story to find out why you are unable to pay the rent and if they realize that you have the new reasons then they wouldn't have to go to a guarantor but then in most cases if they realize that you don't have any genuine reason then of course you would have to go to a guarantor to pay that money and that is the reason for which most people are usually scared to serve as guarantors for international students well so before you get to this issue of guarantor you would have had to find the the, the place of before course. you need a guarantor but how do you even get a place that is, also, place? Another that is issue. also another issue but we i mean we've got you covered yes, don't worry so, we've got so, your back but we will let's find out how other people have done it okay. because there are a host of international mm -hmm. students here in the uk let's find out how they did it maybe you can pick one or two tips on what to do if you intend coming here but when we come back trust us we are going to give you all the tips as to how to secure accommodation before you arrive in the uk so i tell my unconditional operator the university sent me a list of accommodation being managed by them which I chose one, and that was going for £7,213 for 50 weeks. So I was asked to make a down payment of um, £250, which I did. And when I got here, I, I realized that there were many accommodations available being managed by private landlords, and they were very cheap. And I wish. I, I hadn't signed on to the university accommodation, which I felt it was too expensive. 
what happened was that the the agent let someone as i mentioned <coughs> do the viewing for me so we we spoke on 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 facetime and facetime i'm sure for those of you who use um what's that we use like for more than facetime so we use a facetime to do video call there was also the option of using uh, facebook to do video call so he took me around the room um, and i saw he took me there were about at the time Three rooms were not occupied. He took me around by video call, and I selected this one. When I came, um, I was happy. When I arrived in the UK, um, I had to see myself for myself. But even before that, I had to make a deposit of 150 pounds, and this money is meant for a, a situation where, when you are leaving and nothing is all things are this the way you met them, that, that 150 pounds will be refunded to you. I continue searching on the university accommodation services website to compare prices of buildings, and then I also placed a request. So I just gave my um, price details, what I wanted, um, and then what I could afford. So um, I think about two weeks later, the college and then both the college and then the uh, university accommodation services, you know, sent me an email concerning an apartment that they found for me. And then when I compared the prices, I realized that the college accommodation was quite cheaper and then cooler. So I decided to go for the college accommodation, which is this one, rather than the university's accommodation website. So Luckily for me, I knew someone who, was, who could help me in the UK. He lived in Switzerland, so he connected me with someone in Coventry. I spoke to him at length several weeks before I, I, I set off from Ghana, but to my surprise I got here and there was no room for me, so we had to do a quick room search with my staff in his room on that particular. I got, I got to Coventry around half past six. It was, a, it was a Saturday and it was very difficult for me because I didn't know anyone around. And he was the only person I knew. He didn't have a room for me. What was I going to do? I was thinking I was far from home, I was in trouble and all of that. Luckily for me, he made a few calls to the student union president to some of his friends. He never got anyone, but he just called one, one Ghanaian and he said, Oh, I have a room to spare in my flat, so if I would like it, I should just come up. When, he, when we called him, he was at work, he was on night shift, so I had to wait with my staff till around 2 a.m. My, my auntie actually made a, rec um, a reservation for me, but for the fact that I didn't know my way around, I didn't know how to get there and it was raining i was already frustrated enough that i had to be dragging my box around school everybody's see i was already frustrated enough so i just needed a place to sleep so i went straight to the hotel uh, sorry so the reception is in school yeah i told them i needed a place to sleep they said, okay that's fine they're gonna help me you know make a reservation and all of that so they did that called a taxi for me which was free all right welcome back so just before we left we gave you that assurance that we will be giving you some tips as to how to secure accommodation before you get to the UK as an international student and I'm very certain that you also had um, the experiences that some other international students also shared. Well, having tried both the university accommodation and private accommodation, yeah. one thing I've realized is that the university accommodations are always very secured. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes, I mean that you are assured of 100% mm. security. Yeah. That is not to say that um, when you live in a private accommodation, you are not secured. I mean, it depends mm. on where you find a private accommodation. If you want to enjoy mm. student life at that level, then maybe you would want to consider uh, student accommodation and then see how it goes. All right, so let me take you through um, quickly some of the sites that we have identified where you can go and then um, um, get some of these accommodations, but it all also depends on your budget but like mm. we said um, based on the university that you are going to maybe your university already has a plan or provision for accommodation but then um, you can also visit these websites and um, the first one we, we are looking at is um, room buddies we also have ideal flatmates room go move bubble spare room gum tree find a hood open rent zoopla and then right move you can call these the top 10 um, but not by any standard, so exactly. maybe I by mean, our analysis mm -hmm. and, and research, we can call them the top 10. But there are other 
websites i mean there are thousands of them but you are thinking of um security that that is cyber security you are thinking about fraud you are thinking about all the internet fraud and so on and so these are quite trusted ones that have good reviews online that we can recommend to you to try yes but then uh, these are also general websites um that I, i'm sure operate everywhere mm, here yeah. in the uk but then um specifically if you are coming to sheffield i'm sure you can rely on unihomes that is unihomes.co.uk you can also trust uh, my student and also sheffield student housing.co.uk so these three websites in case you are or you find yourself or you get the opportunity to attend a university here um, in sheffield you can visit these three websites to secure accommodation before you come but you have to make sure that of course you have a guarantor who will put things in place for you before you get to the uk but the good thing about this place is that securing accommodation basically everything is done online mm -hmm. so there's nothing like even a, if agent. you were here you still do it online exactly so there's nothing like gets an agent to well there you. are agents but they are working in in relation with the landlords mm -hmm. and so it is not for you to bear mm. as compared to elsewhere uh where you would have to pay for you register with the agents anytime you go to view a place you'd have to pay for nancy Esika. i mean walking to mm. that place you'd have to pay so if you go to check 10 houses you are paying 10 times it's not like that and then here again you pay the rent monthly yeah you pay it monthly but you will sign an agreement depending on what the landlord is looking for so if the landlord wants a six months contract a one-year contract you will be binded to live there for one year before you can move but you will pay the money monthly you will not have to pay advance payment for whatever period you are staying because i remember when we were coming we saw the pictures of the facility that we were going in for and i remember at a point i've now asked that hey if really this is what you are going to get then i mean this is just amazing because i and had had so many issues yes with agents back in ghana so i was like <laughs> literally meaning if i get here and the place is not just as i'm seeing online it was going to be fireworks between myself and the hostel managers but i came and i just loved it it was just as i saw online and the customer service is just so amazing exactly i mean it's just exactly so they have the managers, managers who wow. manage everything you call them when you have a problem and they come to solve it i mean that is not to say that it is 100 percent for every landlord or property owner but to a large extent i think it is fair yeah what are some of the facilities that one gets when for instance you get into um, a university mm. accommodation okay so for university accommodations or even private accommodations who are renting out to students most of the thing most of the those uh, uh, accommodations are already finished mm. as in you go in and in the bedroom you find a bed usually a standard bed you find uh, a wardrobe you find a washing machine a washing machine a in microwave. the house a microwave uh, a fridge, fridge freezer kettle mm. heaters in the yeah. house there will be proper heating system in place mm. the washroom you would have um everything that that makes a, a normal home very homely to live in and so you will not have to move about carrying boxes every time i remember when we were moving from our student accommodation to our private accommodation all we carried were our bags because that's all we went with and one basic necessity here that every almost every landlord provides in their facilities also access to the internet as from across the world apart from the uk if you have any intentions of coming to the uk for studies and there is the need which i know there would be to secure accommodation don't panic do not get frightened with all these things we are saying just go online 
and search for these websites that we've given you and then the student union can be of help to you yeah i don't know about other universities but for Sheffield Harlem university the student union is very 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 helpful where the welfare executives can actually help you they've actually entered into partnership with some accommodation uh, owners to provide cheaper uh, services for students and so you can also go online read about your school get connections to the school the students union they can also recommend you to people who can help and i'm sure you'll be fine yes so um basically that is what it is try and get on social media it's also very yeah. important because i know that most of these country-based societies have mm. social media handles exactly. get in touch with them find out if they can assist you in any way possible to be able to secure accommodation so that when you get to the uk you not struggle to get a place to lay your head so just before we go just to be safe if you if you're not so sure of what you're getting yourself into don't go into long contracts you can yeah. just sign three months because i think there are three months six months ten months and twelve months and so on so enter a very short contract so that when you come and you are able to find your way around and you see i mean you see top of how things are going you can then it will be easier to move up because once you sign the contract well, you cannot you contract. cannot uh change that contract or end it when you get here yes yeah, so um it's been a pleasure yeah, sharing a pleasure our experience on accommodation with you and i want to believe that this particular episode has been very 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 helpful informative. to you very informative to yeah. you we are just hoping that you make very good use of this information because i keep saying that i wish we had this information before coming it would have saved a lot but hey that is the reason for which we came before you, you. <laughs> so, <laughs> just so that you get some experiences to share with you for your life yeah. here in the uk to be much comfortable mm -hmm. at the end of the day the main focus is for you to get a place to lay your head to be able to focus on your studies and achieve academic excellence exactly it's been a real pleasure sharing this information with you don't forget to subscribe abna kwabna tv follow us on social media we're on facebook and then on instagram please do well to like our page and share our videos if you've not yet uh, clicked the notification bell please do so so that you get notified anytime a new episode is up um next week we shall be not saturday yes we are having a live interactive session with you on facebook but even before saturday i'm not catch mm. you in whilst you're watching this video i'm sure that like i keep saying we are not the only ones who have been to school abroad and yeah. i'm sure that there are millions of people out there who also have experiences about accommodation once you're watching the video please go down there into the comment, the comment section mm -hmm. and then share your experiences with us exactly. for other, others to also learn from it please like our video spread the news let other people know about this Series. again if you have any topic you would want us to cover please drop it in the comment section if you want us to discuss any issue of interest to you please don't hesitate to let us know wherever you can drop it down here or on facebook or on instagram wherever you find abna kwabna tv so see you on saturday on facebook at 5 p.m. Yes, Facebook yeah. Live. You're discussing, discussing the same topic. Yeah. So please join please us. Join and, us. And it's a live Facebook. interaction. Yes. So you have the opportunity to ask us anything you want us to clarify based on the information we are giving you now. So see you on Saturday and then same time next week right here on YouTube. My name is Abna and he is. <laughs> See you in a bit. See you, mate. See you, mate. <laughs>